How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? This is uh, your host of the All Elite Podcast uh, at Real Kyle Masters. Kyle Masters here. Um, normally, we'd be coming on here and talking about uh, AEW normally as we do here on the All Elite Podcast. Uh, but due to these uh, the circumstances, uh, you know, the show didn't go as planned as uh, <laughs> it, it normally would. Um, this week, uh, we lost somebody in the AEW world um, that meant a lot to us and it meant a lot to a lot of people. Um, Brody Lee, a.k.a. or sorry, John Hubbard, a.k.a. Brody Lee, uh, Luke Harper, as he was known in AE, or, uh, WWE, um, passed away um, earlier this week and it's it's been tough. It's been tough for a lot of people out there. It's been tough for myself who uh, grew up liking Brody Lee and, you know, him being um, a big part of, you know, everybody's lives, um, especially the people in AEW. So um, normally we'd come on here, myself and Tiff, talk about AEW Dynamite, talk about, you know, everything AEW like we normally do with, you know, fun and enthusiasm and, you know, just our, our, our bubbly styles, but, uh, obviously due to what's happened, um, and out of respect to, uh, Brody Lee's family, uh, wife, Amanda, his two kids, Brody Jr. and Nolan, um, we're not going to do, uh, all the podcast this week. Um, Brody was an amazing person as we've been seeing over the last couple of days, um, with, um, People coming out, wrestlers coming out with stories about Brody Lee and how much of an incredible human being he was. Um, it's just we lost a great person here in AW, and we lost someone way too soon. Um, so it would it wouldn't have been fitting for me and Tiff to come on here and been ourselves. It would have been really tough for me to do. I know it would have been really tough for Tiff to do as well. So out of respect for their family and of what's happened me and tiff are not going to do all elite podcast today we're just going to do this tribute video and we'll be back next week um so yeah it was <laughs> yeah and it's very tough for me to do this too as well um even after watching bt this week um i broke down and i know a lot of you guys broke down out there it was really tough to watch especially how close he was with some of the dark order members and it's and with the episode that happened tonight in AEW Dynamite with the tribute episode, and you, we uh, we seen how tough it was for a lot of the wrestlers there. It was incredible to see how much Brody did mean to a lot of people, and especially the wrestlers out there. So, again, out of respect for Mr. Brody Lee, his family, and AEW, we are not going to podcast this week. We are going to come back next week. So. Yeah, that's going to wrap it up, guys. <laughs> I really, uh, it's tough for me to even come on here. So thank you very much for understanding to you, you fans out there of AEP. And thank you very much. So we will be back next week. Our thoughts and prayers are with the entire family of, of Brody Lee and um, and all of you out there that are, effect, are affected by this in one way of another, or another because... It's been rough. It's been very rough. Like I, I'm sitting here and it, it's been crazy. I can't even put it together the last couple of days, and I might as well when I'm on here share a story to you guys, um, which I'll probably say next week and, and reiterate. But uh, the first time I met uh, Brody Lee, he was Luke Harper uh, back in uh, the WWE, and um, I was at WrestleMania 34. Uh, I was attending my first ever WrestleMania access, so I was pretty excited. Um, I was very overwhelmed that day just from seeing like ever like all the wrestlers you can go and get autographs from and meet and everything. So it was a big day for me. Uh, near the end of the day, uh, myself and my buddy uh, Brandon, we got to uh, go into the elimination chamber, and inside the elimination chamber, there actually was two wrestlers that you could meet and greet with and take a picture with. So I was like, that's pretty cool. I'll, we'll go and do that. And lo and behold, it was Luke Harper at the time, or Harper and Rowan, who were the Bludgeon Brothers. And it was, you know, it was, okay. I was like, okay. Like, I, I, I've i been a big fan of Harper's work in WWE, and I, I've been watching it ever since the, 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 the Wyatt family came in. So I, I really wanted to meet both of them. 
So I'm, just to give you guys a picture, I'm wearing, and I'll, I'll see if I can put the, the, the picture up here. I'm wearing an Undisputed Era t-shirt, and um, my buddy Brandon forgot what he was wearing, but I was wearing an Undisputed Era t-shirt, and when I'm walking in, I get into the ring, and Luke Harper, uh, aka Brody Lee, is staring right at me, and he's just giving me this, like, deer in the headlights look, and when I get up to him, he's like, <laughs> I kid you not, I'm sorry for swearing, he goes, what the fuck are you wearing? <laughs> And I, I didn't know what to say. I was like a deer in the headlights. I was just like, uh, uh, like I didn't know what to say. Like it was, he had the most serious face on his, uh, even a serious look on his face. And all, all I hear is Rowan go over and goes, that's the undisputed era. You idiot. And it was just, those two were like ripping on each other. And then Luke Harper was ripping on me for wearing an undisputed era shirt. I don't know if he had beef with them at the time, but I remember when, uh, I sat next to him. He put his arm around me. He like gave me like a good like <laughs> like thunder grip. It was really funny. Um, but then like as we were leaving, uh, I looked at I looked at him and he gave me the whole like the big smirk and the wink. Like I'm just messing with you, bud. <laughs> it was it was awesome. Was that little moment right there. Like we barely had a conversation, but that little moment made my entire trip. I remember talking about that even like the whole drive home. Like it was such a, a cool moment and it's one moment I'm going to remember for the rest of my life and just goes to show you how much of a good person and awesome person he is with fans uh, and that's only part of it of how good he was as a person and how much of an incredible human being he was um, I also do want to give a shout out to what I've seen uh, Mick Foley I think and CM Punk um, donating all their proceeds from their pro wrestling tees merchandise all of January to the Hubber family, which is incredible. And it's, it's so awesome. You guys have no idea how much that like, like touches my heart. It's, it's amazing. Um, so I'll be definitely be purchasing some CM Punk shirts, some Mick Foley shirts, whatever wrestler comes out and says, they're going to do the same thing. I'll, I'm going to make sure I buy some shirts for the month of January. And I hope you guys out there to uh, show your support for that. So again, no AP this week, guys. Uh, thank you very much for understanding, and then uh, we'll see you back here right next week uh, for another AAP, uh, back to our usual selves. So uh, thoughts and prayers are with the Hubber family at this time. So we are going to end off this um, actually with a pretty cool tribute video. Um, this was done by uh, a YouTube account called Wrestling Superstars. Um, if you guys to please uh, support them for letting us use this video uh, for the tribute for tonight, um, go over to their YouTube channel. I'll put the links down in the description for you, below for you guys to follow. I'll put it up on the screen as well. Uh, before the video plays, please go and support them by subscribing to them and liking them on Facebook. Uh, so again, thank you to you guys for letting us use uh, this video to uh, pay tribute to uh, Brody Lee. So uh, that's going to do it, guys. Kyle Masters, as always, we'll see you guys next week. Here is the tribute video to uh, Mr. Brody Lee. From Rochester, New York, weighing 273 pounds, he is the exalted one, Mr. Brody Lee. I wanted to be a successful professional wrestler and I wanted to get into these gritty and grimy feuds that have these crazy matches that mean something. Before I was even hired, um, Claudio calls me. He goes, hey, but somebody wants to talk to you. It's a man I've never met, never spoken to, nothing. And he, for the next 10 minutes, rattles off these ideas of what the Wyatt family became. Literally everything he said was exactly what he wanted to present it that way, and I ha just happened to fit in perfectly at the time. You know, he's a brother to me. Since NXT, the early days, it's always been me and him, you know. We kind of crafted this thing together. Nothing to do with anybody else that asked for their release. Like I'm a completely separate entity. I just want to wrestle, and that's the thing. Like it was, it was becoming a thing where I was running out of time, and it, it, it becomes like, do I want to do this? I mean, I don't want to run out of time. I want to do it while I still can. 
I just want to wrestle around the world again and just mm. do it on my own terms. And on Saturday, Cody, you are going to put some respect on my name. You are going to put some respect on the Dark Order's name. I have a very clear vision of what I want Dark Order to be, and I think I can bring it up to a certain level that it should be at and make a huge impact. And again, like make a difference in the industry uh, of professional wrestling. My father passed away in 2001. I debuted a month after he passed away. I guess if I had a goal in life, it was to be as good a dad as my dad. And I think I'm on my way. <laughs> and uh, I guess for me to be able to do that, it's super special. <laughs> He's one of the biggest fans in the world. For him to be able to see what I've done and uh, the person that it's made me, I can't really describe it. One of my favorite matches of all time is Piper vs. Valentine 1983, the dog collar match. So in discussion of what should the big match be that we do, I almost jokingly threw out, let's do a dog collar match. And everyone goes, yeah, that's a great idea. And I was like, oh my God. So then the day of, they say, hey, Valentine's coming and he wants to talk to you. You know, it was unreal. He, you know, he, then after the match, he pulled us aside, said how impressed he was, like how, how much he loved it. And I, like, it was crazy. And then they had that great shot of him at the end, of him just applauding. Feels very special to me. In this stage of my career, like there's nothing I would ever take for granted, like especially now. And also the ability to make a difference in the industry is unreal feeling. And it's almost like in 20 years, like what am I gonna be remembered for? So like maybe it'd be helping change the business for good. As much as you know, you wanna talk about like John Huber's, a, you know, as a person, Huber Boy 2, Brody Lee, Luke Harper are all Jonathan Huber, and I'm that because of those three personalities, I guess. And it's professional wrestling. It made me what I am. It's, uh, it's very powerful.